yeah. It's Thursday. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Six Pack Lab. I'm your host, Johnny Catanzano, and today we have an extremely special guest that I'm very excited to talk with, Branch Warren. Thank you for coming in, sir. Man, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Branch Warren, Mr. Olympian, IFBB Pro, Arnold Classic Champion, longtime career in the IFBB as a professional bodybuilder, but he does a lot more than that, and we're going to kind of get to know him today. We're going to uh -huh. talk about what he's doing now. He's got some cool products here we're going to discuss a little bit, too. As always, we're going to start off the podcast with the latest in health news, pulled off a cool article I think we might find a little bit interesting, and as always, my man Ray Ray on the ones and twos. So what's up? What's up? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There he is. Back with me. Ray Ray is going to throw it into the description there, so that way you guys can click on the link and check it out for yourselves. Then always, we'll move on to Jim Fails the Fixes. It's Throwback Thursday. We're going to highlight one of our clients and one of their amazing transformations, and then on to the interview with Branch, which I'm definitely looking forward to. So why don't we go ahead and start off with this latest in health news. Title of the article, DPS Troopers Suing Over New Fitness Standards That Require Their Waistline to Be Measured. I thought this was interesting because, first off, Branch, you're in the Dallas area. Yes. DPS, Department of, uh, Department of Public Safety here in Texas. And I think I'm pretty sure this is for state troopers mainly. I don't think it has to do with, like, your local city cops or anything like that. It might be maybe at some point. But the, the article says the lawsuit filed in Travis County Court, that's actually here in Austin, Texas, the main, the main capital, uh, they, uh, says the waistline requirement implemented last year, 40 inches for men, 35 inches for women, is discriminatory because troopers who do not meet the standards face termination, transfer, demotion, even if they pass their physical fitness tests and all the other required parts, that, that, that they can basically lose their job. Uh, the officers would also lose out on overtime pay and the ability to work off-duty jobs if they don't meet the requirement. So in the article, you know, for example, let's say there's a six foot two, 230-pound male trooper that has a 41-inch waist. Because of his large build, he might be screwed. I mean, what do you think about that? Um, I think it should be based on physical fitness. 100%. You know, um, I, know, you know I know some guys that play pro football. They're yep. linemen. Yep. These guys are huge, and their waists are way bigger than 40 inches. Way bigger, and they're, they're fast, way they're in good shape. And they're in great shape. Yeah, absolutely. So just because your waist is big doesn't necessarily mean you're not physically fit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think what they're trying to do is force force the troopers to stay physically fit and That's not, be, what, not be obese. Yeah. But measuring your waistline is not a good indication. It's a really poor indicator. Um, currently, officers are required to pass two physical fitness tests each fiscal year which the department, the department says accounts for age and sex. So I'm guessing there's different times, if depending if you're male or female or, you know, depending on your, uh, your age. Spokesperson for DPS declined to comment, of course, because currently, obviously, they're in litigation right now. But um, Branch is right. I, I do like the intent of requiring officers to be more physically fit, but they certainly missed the mark on for a waist measurement. Yeah, I, my best friend is a um, police officer back in Dallas. He's on the SWAT team. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's, I don't know, 6'1", mm -hmm. probably 285, 290. Big guy. Big guy. Big friend. Um, I don't know how big his waist is, but yeah. he might have a, a a problem with that too. Yeah. You know, the dude's in shape. Yeah. And, you know, but I do agree that they should have to have a, a minimal physical fitness standard. They should have Correct. to maintain and keep. Yeah. Because it's, I think... Tell me if I'm wrong, but a lot of these DPS agents, like where I grew up in West Texas, mm -hmm. they were like the Lone Ranger. Yeah. If they had to deal with this situation. Even by themselves. They might be, the backup might be 100 miles away, literally. Yeah. So uh, if they're not physically fit, they're not, I don't know if they might, that might hinder them in performing their job. Correct. They uh, might either get outrun or they might get overpowered. Powered, correct. Yeah. So, and that's, uh, that's the problem. But I don't think measuring your waistline is a. Very, very, very poor choice of, uh, of data point. What would be a point. better data point? Well, yeah. let's, for like BMI or well, what? Well, so here's, that was going to bring that point up. This reminds me of BMI, which is severely outdated. Okay. So I got a life insurance policy a few years ago, and they send somebody out to your house to do blood tests and all this, that, and the other. And I got all done, and the lady comes back. She's like, well, you didn't get a perfect score. Because I'm a pretty fit dude, obviously. You didn't get a perfect score. Um, your BMI came back as your obese on the scale. <laughs> Yeah, I was um, about one week post contest from uh, the Arnold one year. I was doing that appearance at a nutrition mm -hmm. shop. Yeah, they had one. Of those, so you uh, were shredded. I was shredded. My body fat was under four percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep, yeah, three something. Right. Um, and because I'd stayed on my diet for this appearance, because I had to guest pose and do an uh, appearance at a store. Got to stay on it. And um, so I'm, I really couldn't be any leaner than I was. Right. And uh, they said, hey, let's test you. Let's you know do this test for your you know BMI and this and that. I'm like, no, not really. And they kept on. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. It came back. It said I was like thirty-two percent body fat. 
She was like, you might want to think about changing your, your nutrition program. It's not... <laughs> I'm Miss like, Arnold Classic Champion. Yeah, I think he needs a. He needs I'm, a, like, he needs I'm looking at this lady. I'm like, I go, I go. So you think I'm fat? And I'm not raise my shirt up. I go, do I look fat? She's like, oh well, maybe you need to. Sit. I'm like, oh, I just left. Like, you can't, it's it's you can't, you can't fix stupid. It's all and you definitely you can't fix so, stupid. You definitely can't argue and I'm with like it. your machine. You need to like just throw in the backyard there. And it's garbage. It's, it's, it's super outdated. Now I think there there needs Ray to answer your question. There needs to be more data points. A physical yeah. test. Um, Maybe maybe a blood test or blood work just to see what their triglycerides and cholesterol and that for like long term health is you know age sex height and weight it should all be taken into consideration not just their body shape you know one thing to think about is the state obviously invests in these DPS troopers because as far as I know you know there's a lot of long term benefits in being involved and they want them to stick around if you're there so long you can retire there and so they want them to be healthy and they want them to be fit and they don't want to invest in guys that might maybe. I get it too. Bow they, out. they want you don't want to walk up and see a trooper who's got a sixty inch waist, right? Because automatically you're thinking, all right, you just kind of this dude ain't catching me. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> it's, and and the public perception too. They're like, look at this fat ass. Yeah, you know, I get that, right. but I don't think that's how they they should, you should get fired or terminated. Uh, absolutely not. Maybe it's they, like something like maybe we need to work on this with you and. It, then maybe look at other data points other than just their waist size. I mean, I think it should be based on performance. One hundred percent. I mean, if you can, if they want to be more shaped and raise the physical fitness standards. That's it across the board for everybody. That's it, and it should be a level playing field. I mean, you should factor in whether they're male or female and other factors, but it should be yeah. a, it should be a standardized test and not just your waistline. So. <laughs> I, fu- I figured you'd find that one interesting. Ray, Ray, throw ahead and throw that article in the description. You guys can go we'll check do, that we'll out do. at home. Very interesting. Sounds like they're going to be uh, probably in court for a little while on that <laughs> one. So yeah. why don't we move on to Jim Fails to Fix is one of my favorite parts. And as always, guys, this isn't lighthearted fun. We're only here to help. And fortunately enough, we have a Mr. Olympian here, um, a Arnold Classic champion here who kind of probably knows what he's doing in the gym. <laughs> So we're gonna help Brant. We're gonna get Branch to help out, and uh, for you, for those of you that are listening on Apple and you can't watch, I'm gonna try to describe it as best as I can. So we're in a gym here. It looks like we're in a LA Fitness, some co- corporate gym. We'll play it. And the gentleman has the hammer lat pull down, and I think, <laughs> I think he's trying to do pull downs, but he is. Um, I think he's got so much weight on it that he really can't get it started. But I think he thinks it started. <laughs> Does he actually think he's working out? <laughs> I, I I think he think like he looks pretty serious. Now I want to get your breakdown. That's what my seven year old daughter does when I take her to the gym. She, <laughs> hangs, she hangs from the equipment and bounces. She's a cutie. I saw her at the gym the other day. She uh she's probably got a lot more range of motion than this cat. That looks, that looks dangerous. <laughs> so Brance, what do you what do you, what do you think this guy's doing? I have no idea. Do you think he's really trying to work his lats? Oh, if I saw that in the gym, I wouldn't think. I think it was like maybe stretching, stretching or something. Or something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe so it's a it's a new it's a new uh, isometric uh, stretch pool is what that is. What what is maybe so let's let's say a viewer at home right now is like, oh shit, that's how I do lap pull downs. What should this guy be doing in order to effectively use that piece of equipment? He's like, look at the little picture that's on there. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows you how to sit in the how machine. Sit in it. <laughs> you know, and, and I tighten the little pad down on your legs to keep you in it. And they grab the handles and pull down <laughs> and go back up. Uh, your arms have to bend. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. He ain't working on lats. I don't, <laughs> no. I don't know, man. He's working on a lat strain. Maybe. Uh, I've seen some people that were drunk, kind of in that same position. <laughs> <laughs> Down on Sixth Street, up, yeah. yeah, right. Down on Sixth Street, yeah. Um, leaving the bar, like, yeah, I'll hit a quick workout on the way home. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, if he's trying to do lap pull downs, man, the brother lost. He's lost. He's not so, even close. He's nah. not even. He went to the ballpark, but unfortunately, he didn't get in. He's not nah, even in the ballpark. Nah, he showed up somewhere else. So, Jim, Joe, John, at home, if you are watching this, Branch says you need to kind of reassess and and. You're not even doing the lats, man. You're not even doing the pull down. Yeah, get nope. your butt in the machine. Most machines, um, almost you know, Metroflex is an exception, but most gyms you go to, they have a picture, yeah, on the machine that shows you how to do the exercise. How to do it. So consult you know, there first. Maybe you look there. Yeah. If you've never worked out before. Yep. And get an idea of like how you're supposed to do it. What's maybe aside from this? What's maybe a tip for viewers that they can that you can give them real quick on how to how to actually benefit from a machine because I see a lot of people butcher machines. They don't sit in and lock themselves in it. So if they're doing leg extensions, their butts coming up, or if they're doing, you know, the hammer pull downs, their butts coming up. What's maybe some advice you could give on how to effectively use machine. Get a trainer, get a trainer. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, um, 
you know, somebody was, knows what they're doing. Somebody knows what you're doing because you know, okay, even if you look at the picture on the machine, okay, how you're supposed to sit in it, that gives you a vague idea of basic idea of how to do it. But the actually how to do it properly right. and use it effectively, yep. you're probably gonna need somebody to show you, yeah, so that you do it right because you just don't know you don't know how to adjust it, right? You know, if you don't know biomechanics, things like that, which mm-hmm. most people don't, no, they're not gonna understand where they need to adjust the seat or where their legs need to be or where their shoulders or chest anything needs to be. So, 100%. um, get a trainer. You know, yeah. any gym you go to. If you sign up, say, "Hey, can you have somebody show me how to use the equipment?" They'll provide. They'll usually have a. Free, usually, it's free session. Free, yeah, the first free one. session. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I think. Now, if you get sold the thirty pack of training sessions, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Just get. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I, that's my advice to people. I tell them all the time, "Hey, how do you know what do I do?" And I'm like, "Get a trainer." Yeah, that's it, man. That's great advice, Branch. Appreciate that. Now, what he said is, if you don't know what you're doing, just ask. It's as simple Absolutely. as that. Especially yeah. if you're really, really new to the gym, that's probably one of the smartest. The most beneficial things you can do. But, and I think girls are better at it than guys. Absolutely. Girls, girls ask. Absolutely. Guys, every guy knows how to work out. Yeah, they think they do. Every guy knows how to fight. Yeah. Every, right. guy, knows to, every guy knows how to shoot a gun. Yeah. But in reality, most don't know how to do Any shit. Either. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> until it's about to happen. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's like everybody knows how to fight, right? Until it's time until, to fight. Until it's time yeah. to throw yeah, bows. And, uh, exactly. So, uh, Wait, I'm supposed to get hit? <laughs> <laughs> everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Who said that one, Ray? Uh, that was. Uh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Damn, yeah, baby. I was about to say yeah, sorry, man. Sorry. Ray, Ray's a young buck. He's only 24 years young. So yeah. we, we like to pick on him with some. I don't some know any movies. Old, we talk about anything. movies and music, and he's just like, huh? Oh, never heard of it. Like, so let's talk about Saved by the Bell. He's like, I've never seen that. Never seen it. Saved wow. You've never, you never seen Saved by the Bell? That's nah. even Branch's Saved was by like, the Bell, it, dog. Wasn't it late 80s or early? It was 90s? late 90s. It was like late 80s, early, mid, and late 90s. Okay, but towards I was, the late, I was the born, college years. I was like mid 90s. I was born in 94. I was born in 94. And my man was still a sperm swimming around in a testicle. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, he was. Seriously, but, no, but they showed reruns till like 2000 for sure. I was still sure. six, for, <laughs> like, but that's when you learn your your values of growing up. Is saved by the, I learned all my values oh, yeah, from Saved by the Bell. I got to get on it. I gotta re-watch. Is that on Netflix or something? I th- I think they are actually. I okay. think they are. And then they had the yeah. college years. They brought in that guy that played football. Uh, God, I can't remember his name, but he actually did. He was a former NFL player. That, uh, anyways, moving on here. Thank you for the help with the uh, Jim Fails of Fixes branch. I really appreciate it. Let's move on to Throwback Thursday. It is actually Thursday here in Texas, and we always like to highlight one of our clients that has just made an amazing transformation. And I'm going to talk about Ken from North Carolina here. Uh, Ken was 53 years old. Ken and I worked together in our platinum coaching program. So Ken actually was a customer of ours, and he was doing some of our – uh, digital workout programs and he was doing using some of our supplements but he wasn't really getting the results he wanted so bring me in i help make sure everything's the way it should be laid out nutrition plan workout plan based around his schedule and his body and his goals 199.4 pounds starting weight 179.4 90 days right there nothing crazy no strenuous super hard workouts we developed workouts that he liked you can see he's got his own home gym here he actually in one of the pictures, you can't see it. He rigged his own cable machine up by buying pulleys and attaching them to the rafters and his ceiling and everything. And just, I was just tickled to death and super impressed when he did that. He's like, Johnny, I got some cables set up, and he sent me pictures. I was like, that's awesome, man. You know, that's it. You know, with weight training, you don't need fancy machines. Don't you just need weight resistance? Don't. You just need resistance. That's Metroflex, right? That's Metroflex, <laughs> man. I, you know, people say, man, how do you work out there? I'm like, weight is weight, bro. That's hundred pounds is hundred pounds. The older and the uglier it is, the, typically the heavier it is. <laughs> It's uh, you don't need a fancy, you know, five thousand dollar machine. No, you know, just basic stuff. Scroll down to the next next picture, Rick. So you can see. Uh, wait, before you go, <coughs> lost a ton of body fat in the midsection. His posture's improved. His shoulders are popping out more. He's got more chest. Scroll down. You can see a lot more development. Now, guys tend to carry a lot of fat in the back, and it's either first to go or last to go. For Ken, he was able to lose a lot there in just ninety days. But look at his lat development. He was doing pull-ups incorrectly when we were talking. That's the other thing. I had him sending videos to me, showing me some of the exercises and things he did. He'd send those in. I'd say, hey, we just need to adjust this. We just adjust that. It's a different day and age. Remote coaching is really, really fantastic. You can still be very, very hands-on, like in our Platinum Coaching Program, with um, being able to send videos and using our app and software. It's just it's the limits are endless with it. And a big fan. Ken, fantastic job. For those of you at home, if you're watching this and you've, you're one of our customers, if you've done coaching with us or one of our programs, please send in your transformation to team at sixpackabs.com. We would love to feature you here on the Six Pack Lab. Fantastic job, Ken. Keep it up, brother. Happy to, happy to help you out. Branch, you ready to talk a little bit? Let's do it. All right, let's do it, man. I'm really excited for this. 
I'm a fan. I'm a fan of bodybuilding. I've been a fan a long time, and Branch has been around in the industry. I mean, literally, I was looking at you in the magazines when I was um, grad in high school and graduating high school and getting into college. So, high so how old are you? I'm 35. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I've, I've been around a, li- a little bit. so uh, You're not a young buck no more. Not a young buck anymore. <laughs> I'm getting up there. And I, I went to the Arnold Classic in 96 with my dad. He worked for Ostrom. You're okay. familiar with Ostrom? They have yeah. ostrich meat sticks. I, I know Ostrom. Our yeah. wicked cuts taste better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they do. They do. Absolutely. I did try one earlier. No, no comparison, but he worked for them years ago. I don't even know if they're still around, but he took me to the Arnold Classic because he had to do the trade show or whatever. That's where I fell in love with bodybuilding. That was the first time you I was You actually went there before I did. I think my first Arnold Classic was 2002. In 2002? Man, we were almost cross paths, almost. But I just, I remember sitting in the convention center and how packed it was. And his their, their booth was right across from the Muscle Mag booth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's, I was, I don't know, 11, 12 years old. At the time. All the Muscle Mag girls. <laughs> Muscle Mag and Iron Man magazines grew up on those. Big fans. Big, oh, yeah. big fan of those. Those oh, are the yeah. best magazines. So, but anyways, that's that was my first taste in bodybuilding. Uh, we want to find out how Branch got into a little bit about his background. Let's talk about your background. How old are you now? 44. 44 years young. You're still pretty young. That's great, man. Yeah. Yeah. Not a young buck. Not a young buck. No more. Not a young buck. Uh, where are you from originally? I was born in Tyler, Texas. East Texas. Yeah, I grew okay. up in uh, Seymour, Texas, out west. Okay, yeah. I've been through Tyler. I haven't been out through Seymour, though. If you blink, you'll miss it. Yeah, I know. That, that whole area, you blink, you miss a lot of stuff. And you grew up out there? Okay, cool. Do you go to? Um, do you play any sports in high school? And I did. Uh, of course, I played football. And uh, I knew you know, it. You grew up in Texas, especially then. Of course, if you didn't play football, people looked at you like you're weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I loved it, and uh, that was my first love. And uh, I was actually going to be a bull rider. So uh, no shit. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know that. But, uh, did, was your family on a farm or? Yeah, I grew up on a ranch. Okay. So uh, you know, so you had a lot of experience. Raised right? cattle and horses, and okay, you know, we had horses because part of the ranch wasn't accessible by uh, by vehicle. So okay. You had to actually use them for work, uh-huh. and um, you know I had to take care of them. Mm-hmm. That was my one of my first chores. Mm-hmm. I hated them, yeah, because I had to shovel shit and <laughs> feed them. And, Nobody likes to shovel shit yeah, and grow, you know, do all the stuff you got to do. Anybody has horses knows what I'm talking about. That's a lot of but, poop. Uh, yeah, imagine. So then I get older, get my own ranch, and mm-hmm. what I do, I went and bought horses. You got some horses? Yeah, what was I thinking? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to pick up some poop again. <laughs> but uh, no, so uh, you know, out there there wasn't a lot to do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You went hunting and you drank beer. Yeah, that's that it. That's about it. And you cowboyed because that's that's, what you exact, had to do. that's the Texas way. That's it, especially West Texas. So, um, <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, you know, I was like, you know, I'm gonna be a bull rider. And, okay, uh, I'm gonna, you know, win all the money. And how old were you at the time? I was a teenager. Okay, and, uh, still in high school. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, just getting going. And then um, anyway, we ended up moving to Fort Worth area Funk in town. high school. So okay. uh, I went from a school that the two best girls, the two best looking girls in my school were my cousins. <laughs> to uh, Fort Worth, and I think my, my graduating class had about 500 people in it, so wow. life got ex- exponentially better. Yeah, that's that's a pretty big graduating so, class. Yeah, graduating going, class. coming from where you were you were at, yeah. that's a that's a big. Oh, it was great. culture shock, you know. Here comes yeah. the you know the West Texas country boy to, yeah. to the big city, but uh, I uh, you know I wasn't I never I'd seen a couple of bodybuilding magazines, but mm-hmm. I never seen a actual bodybuilder. Right. And, uh, you know, because I was playing football and I knew I came from a town where pretty much everybody made the team because they needed everybody to have a team. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and back then, you had to make the team. Where right. today, everybody gets a, you know, a stinking everybody participation gets a, trophy. Everybody gets a medal. Yeah, you know, we don't want to cut nobody because it might hurt yeah. their feelings or something. Yeah, if somebody's parents calls in, he needs to get the ball more. <laughs> and exactly. then, they give, then they take it away from the star and give it to the guy because his parent called in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, but back in the day, there's only so many spots available. And if you didn't make it, you didn't make it. You didn't make it. So, you went and worked out and got better and you came back and made yeah. the team. That's it. Um, that's a life lesson you learn in life. If you can't learn that in high school, how are you going to survive it as an adult, right? Right. But anyway. So much more. I'm gonna have to have my little rant right there. But, yeah. Uh, no. No. I'm, I'm, so I'm with you. So I was very much aware that, you know, hey, I need to get bigger and stronger <sighs> if I right. want to make the team because yep. now I'm gonna have you have to try out for the team and there's no guarantee you're gonna make it. Right. That's so, why uh, I got into bodybuilding was for football too. Yeah, man. So I had no money and uh, there's a neighborhood gym and um, I couldn't afford a membership so I went and checked it out and I was like, I don't have. It was like 15 bucks. I didn't have 15 bucks. Right. Right. So um, I met this kid in the neighborhood. And he had a membership. He'd go in, open the back door. I'd slip in. <laughs> And I had my membership. <laughs> <laughs> membership granted. So uh, I, uh, I'd go in there and we'd work out, and we didn't know what we're doing. Right. Just young kids. And yeah, just throwing weights around. Yeah, we're two young teenage boys, and they're lifting weights. We just trained, yeah. and uh, you know, me being me, I was like, "Hey, man, let's do everything in the, in the gym every day. Right, we'll get big." Yeah, and uh, so we met this bodybuilder there. He was, you know, probably 275, 280 pounds, about six big. foot tall, big Pretty dude. Big. Yep. national level competitor. Okay, and uh, he had a different girlfriend every week. They were all hot. Yeah, drove a Corvette. Yeah. And uh, do the fight. I want that. 
I was slipping in the gym one day in the back, and uh, he was in a fight with this other big dude. Knocked this dude out, went to the gym. Uh, my <laughs> Outside friend, the gym? Uh, yeah, in the alleyway behind the gym. <laughs> and, uh, this is so hardcore. So, uh, and it was like a health club. It wasn't like a hardcore gym or nothing. And I told my friend, I was like, yo, man, that dude rules, bro. I said, <laughs> I said man, we got to get big, bro. I said, we'll get the chicks, get badass cars, and kick ass. And get <laughs> fights. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, when you're in high school, you think like that, right? So, uh, of course. So, uh, <laughs> So uh, this guy, man, he came up to me one day and he said, hey, man, he said, uh, he goes, you, you two don't know what you're doing. He goes, you're doing it all wrong. You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. You don't have any idea of how to train. Right. He goes, why don't you show up tomorrow and I'll show you how to work out properly. I'm like, all right. He walked off and my friend goes, you're going to show up? I'm like, yeah, man. He goes, dude, that dude's going to kill you, bro. I go, man, I go, just shut up and come on. He's like, man, I ain't doing that. That dude's going to murder you. <laughs> I go, I'm going to get big and jacked, and I'm going to yeah. kick your ass and take your girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, of course, he's like, whatever. And my friend was like this. He was like the this good looking, you know. He was like Rico the, Suave. Yeah, kinda. got all the girls, man. Yeah. You know, good, great athlete mm -hmm. or something. And I was just like, man, whatever, man. So um, I showed up. He didn't. Yeah. And I got my ass kicked. Yep. We trained legs. I thought I knew how to work Legs out. day one, too. Day one. And then, um, <laughs> it's like you think you know how to train I'll give legs, you an, I'll too. give you an idea. To, as the story progresses, you understand what this means. Yeah. So he trained me on legs, and he trained me on a real workout. Yeah. I think I threw up three times. And the last time, I it's like you're dry heaving, mm -hmm. right? But I never lay I wouldn't lay him. I just get up and go back and finish the set. Yeah. And uh, next day, I showed up, you know, back, same thing. Right. You know, I, it's just, I just died for like two weeks, basically. Yeah. But by the end of that two weeks, I was getting better. You, yeah. I wasn't sick no more. I was yep. like, I was, you know. No more dry heaving. Yeah. Starting to, the body's starting to adapt. Exactly. And um, so he used to write my workouts up for me. I trained, blah, blah, blah. Well, I made the team, started, and um, had a great season. I think we were undefeated. And uh, nice. so uh, that next summer, he, uh, I think I was 17, uh -huh. 16, 16, 17. Yeah. And um, he said, hey, do you ever think about comp competing, kid? I'm like, competing? I said, nah, man, I never thought about that. And I, yeah. I'm looking at this dude going, are you nuts? <laughs> you know, this guy's like 100 pounds heavier than me, probably more right. than that, actually, 130 right. pounds. And um, so he took me to a show that weekend, and, I saw what the teenage division was like, and he said, what do you think? I said, man, I could do that if I train for it. And he goes, I'll tell you what, there's a show at the end of the summer. He goes, I'm going to take you to a real gym, mm -hmm. get ready for it, and uh, see what you think. Yeah. So he picked me up, and uh, I said, well, what we got right now? He goes, this ain't a real gym. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so he picked me up on Monday morning. We drove across town, pulled in front of this gym, gravel parking lot, warehouse doors are open, music so loud you can hear it you know, in the parking lot. Yeah. All these big jacked up dudes walking around, yeah. hot chicks. Yeah. And... Um, we walk in and he introduces me to the owner, a guy's named Brian Dobson. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, Hey, man, this is kid I'm telling you about. He wants to do, wants to compete at the end of the summer. He said, Let me look at you. And um, well, before he, before he said that, I, uh, I said, Hey, I said, I have no money. Yeah. I said, I can't afford a membership. Yeah. I said, uh, You know, I'll work it out. I'll take the trash out, clean the place up, you know, trade out with you for a membership. He said, Let me look at you. right there. He goes, uh, Let me look at you. I took my shirt off, hit some poses. He said, I'll tell you what, kid. He goes, I'll let you work out here. You represent the gym and you win. You don't got to buy a membership. He goes, if you lose, you got to work it off. That was 27 years ago. I still haven't bought a gym membership. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Dobson, if you're out there. <laughs> so, you know, and that Brian. gym, that gym, just to clarify for our viewers home, that's Metroflex, the, the original, original Metroflex so, where Branch trained, Johnny Jackson trained, and Ronnie Coleman, of course. A lot of people are probably familiar with that, but that's a legendary just fucking gym. Yeah, and, and the, the kicker to the whole story was so for my first contest um, – this guy, Mark, it brought me over there. Uh -huh. Ronnie Coleman's workout partner. Okay. So I trained for my first contest with Mark and Ronnie and Brian and all these guys. And, um, you know, of course, they kicked my ass every day. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, years later, I asked, I said something to Ronnie, and he says, I said, man, you, you guys, you know, I was a kid. You guys were, you know, Ronnie wasn't pro yet, but he was on his way. Yeah. And you were still 18 or I was 18 so? or 17. Yeah, yeah 17. And um, he goes, man, he goes, it ain't how much you lift, it's how hard you lift. And um, he goes, man, you train. There's some other guys that were working with us sometimes that were, you know, grown men, mm -hmm. and he goes, "Hey, you kicked their ass." He goes, "So that's why we we got rid of them, and you stayed. You stayed. You're welcome. So. <laughs> that's awesome. And to hear that from the legend, probably made you feel pretty good too. It did, especially looking, maybe even talking to him a few years down the road to hear that. I bet that was pretty satisfying. That's yeah. cool, man. So that's really cool. And uh, you, that was your, you know, that was your first show. Yeah, that was. Uh, that's how it all got started. And, okay. um, then I just uh, I knew. Well, I did several shows. And as a teenager, I don't think I ever ever lost really. Yeah. Um, then I as, a, as I was nineteen. So when you graduated high school, that was the path was right in the bodybuilding. And I went to school. You know, um, where'd you go to school? I uh, went to what you call it. Uh, I went to 
Junior College. Okay. Tar- Tarrant County Junior College. Okay. Then I went on to North Texas. North Texas, Mean Green. Uh-huh. Okay. And, um, right up in Denton. So, um, um, you know, I, when I was 18, I won the Teenage National Championships. And uh, Where, where were, was that show? That was in uh, North Raleigh, Durham. Was it South Carolina? North, okay. Carolina, North Carolina. Okay. And um, so uh, there was a bunch of pros. That was one of the toughest teenage shows ever. I was, so the uh, teenage shows, for the, for those of you at home, they're they're – if they're actually pretty important. A lot of people are like, oh, teenage show, who cares? Typically, the people who are re- like win those end up being like Branch or Ronnie Coleman. Well, that particular year, I won the light heavyweight class in the overall. Yeah. The heavyweight winner was Jay Cutler. <laughs> the middleweight winner was name. the winner. The middleweight winner was, um, I believe, uh, Caprice Murray. Okay. He went on to be a good pro. Ronnie St. Cloud got a, I think he was second or third in the light heavies or middleweights. Yeah. And then uh, there was another, I think another pro came out of that, Jeff Willett. Term pro, yep. he came out of that show too. I know that name. So, um, and uh, you know, so it was a pretty for a bunch of young guys, eighteen, yeah. eighteen year guys. That's pretty, a couple, pretty solid show. That's a who's who. So um, I did that, and um, that summer when I graduated, I won that. Went to school, and uh, I did well, what did you go to study? Business. There you go. So oh, me too. Yeah. If uh, I had a do over, I would have done something I liked. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I tell kids now. I'm like, if you're going to school, do something you want to do. Yep, do something you're passionate about. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, I know a lot of people, including myself, that aren't really technically using their degree, you know, BA degree, but, you know, it's all business technically, but if you're going to go to school, definitely pursue something that you can see long term. most jobs, as long as you've got the degree, that's what's important. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're trying to be a doctor or, you know, engineer, okay, that's or different. professional something. Yeah, yeah. That's Specialized, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, do something you enjoy. Absolutely. So it makes it way more enjoyable. Well, quality of life. That's so, what it's uh, all about. I competed one, I didn't compete during my, I did, I think, one show during my college years, um, because I, I had to work my way through school. I worked three jobs and went to school. And, you know, I had to support myself, pay tuition, all that, because I mm-hmm. refused to take a loan out because I was like, I'm not getting out of college and having $100,000 in debt. To me. Smart That's man. Just insane. Yep. So um, I did one show. I was 19. I went into the um, the state championships. Yeah. And um, as 19, went as an open competitor and won the whole show. And back then, Metroflex was like, all the, everybody good came from Metroflex back then for yeah. the most part. Yeah. And I beat everybody in the gym except for Ronnie and Mark because they were way above that. Right. And um, I remember coming back into the gym, and um, I was in the gym that next that Monday after I won, and Ronnie and Mark were like relentless on the dudes. Yeah, like, <laughs> they were riding their asses. Like, you got beat by a teenager, man. <laughs> what the hell, man? You're 35 years old, man. What the hell? And, I mean, it was relentless on them for like a week. So. That's a, that's hilarious. They were getting on that ass. Well, you showed them what was up. Age is just a number. That's it. Age is just a number. So um, when did you know, when did you have that aha moment where you're like, all right, I'm pretty good at this? I can tell you exactly when I had it. It's one of those things in life, you know, you just never, you remember you remember something, you remember specifically where you're at and what mm-hmm. you're doing. Yeah, so absolutely. Like, and um, I had won the team nationals. I was 18. At the time, I was the first person from Dallas Fort Worth to win a national level show. Yeah. Know, yeah, it was a teenage show. but Right, still a national, national level. Show. That's the best and, of the best from the whole country. Correct, and um, I was driving down 360 going to Metroflex that Monday. I just got back in town on Sunday, and um, I'm driving back, and I remember thinking, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. It's the path. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm going to be a pro bodybuilder. Uh, and I, I laid my – on that drive to the gym, I laid out my entire career. No shit. I, I planned out my entire career. What you I was going to do, how I was going to do it. I had long-term goal, short-term goals, and medium goals, and um, I stuck to it, and I climbed all the way up. Theme from that is, guys, you got to set goals. Have to. You have to set goals. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you want to be a pro bodybuilder or you want to be a botanist. You got to set goals. You know, I grew up like super poor and I uh, didn't have two nickels to rub together. Right. And, you know, for me, you know, bodybuilding, I was like, number one, I love it. It's my passion. Mm-hmm. Number two, um, I was like, I, at this point, I've seen the success Ronnie was starting to have. Yeah. And um, I knew enough about it. I'm like, this is my ticket out of this. And um, I had it. I planned out my entire career on that drive. Yeah. Did you did you use the same coaches throughout your entire career? The ones that kind of helped propel you, excel you, or I did it on my own. You um, did you did most of it? really? Mark, Mark, Interesting. That guy Mark, um, he showed me a basic program diet, like that first contest. Yep. And then me being me, I just dove into it. I got it. I studied. I read. I learned what a carbohydrate was, a protein was, how your body used them, different mm-hmm. kinds of proteins, different kinds of carbs, mm-hmm. fats, all this stuff, and right. I just educated myself. And uh, I read everything I could read. You know, we didn't have internet back then, so yeah. we had to read bodybuilding magazines or yep. books or whatever. Yep. And um, I read everything, yeah. too. And, uh, and, I, and until then, I really didn't like to read. Yeah. But now it's it's amazing when there's something you're passionate about and you really want, 
It's way easier yeah, to read. I read 100% it. Agree. I'll read it. I would read these things two or three times to soak it all in. Yeah. And go back and, refer, you know, refer to them. And, uh, Absolutely. I just taught myself. Um, you know, I, I give much credit to Mark for, you know, bringing me to the sport mm-hmm. and to Brian for, uh, you know, being the ultimate motivator. And, uh, you know, he, the thing about Brian is he sees potential in you and people that they don't see themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he did that with me. Yeah. And he did that with Ronnie. Yeah. He did that with more people than I can name here. Yeah. Over the years. But, uh, and uh, I just did it all myself. Yeah. Um, I trained myself, did my own diets. I didn't work with anybody until the 2009 Olympia. Really? So On your own. Who'd you work with at that point? Uh, George Farrow. Okay, George. So did you s- use him for a few shows through the late 2010s and then into the I used him the end? 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And then, and, and then at the end, were you on your own again? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Some, some, some of the best bodybuilders are always on their own. You know your body. No one you knows know you. what you're doing. If you really pay attention. You know. You know, and, and it's better if you come up on your own, you learn your body. That's the, I think, you know, if people have these gurus early on, they don't really learn their body. No. You know, when you're, you have to do it on your own, you have to really pay attention. You and have learn. to. Everything. And Every little change. Yeah. Change the sodium here, changing the carbs well, think, here, changing the fats here. I think the only thing you really need is somebody to look at you and objectively tell you the truth. Yeah. Be and like, okay, you they, need to bring this up. They, this know, what's, they know what they're looking at. Yes. And they're not afraid to shoot you straight. Gotcha. So what I would, what I found was especially as you get on top, you know, you're one of the top guys in the world. Yeah. It's hard for people to say, oh, you don't, you look like shit, get your ass in gear. Yeah. Because the guy who gets 10th place looks incredible. Yeah. Right? You think the 10th place got the Olympia, he's badass. Yeah. But for somebody, no one, they need to know what they're looking at and, and be able to say, hey, man, and you got to respect that person too. Yeah. And uh, for me, I was blessed to have, you know, somebody like Brian in my life yeah. They would tell me. Yeah, he'd and, say uh, straight up. Later on, my wife, you know, she would, uh, mm-hmm. and that's a hard thing to swallow when your wife looks at you and says, like she's also an IFBB professional for those of you at home and those of you listening in. She's a pro fitness competitor. Yes. Yeah, which is honestly one of my favorite divisions in the in the female side of things cuz they are athletes. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, mean incredible athletes and it kind of they kind of took a dip for there wasn't as many competitors. It seems to make in a little bit of a revival. It's uh it's better than the past year or two than it's been in a long time. Yeah. More competitors, better quality. Absolutely. So it's, it's coming back around a little bit. Absolutely. But, uh, that's a hard thing to do though when your wife looks at you and says <laughs> it was like shit. We get your ass in gear. It's like you're like oh, it's yeah. one thing if Brian would tell me, you know, I'd be like, all right. And she'd tell me, I'd be like, you're supposed to love me. But, <laughs> How do you gonna say that? But you know lats. what though? When your woman tells you to get your ass in gear, you get it in gear. You get it in gear. <laughs> <laughs> so true story, Branch. T- tell me a little bit of what it was like when you earned your pro card. That that I know is something that in the bodybuilding world is very prestigious, and for some people it takes a while. For you, it probably didn't take as long just because you were <clears throat> excelled in the sport right from the beginning. But you know, how long did it take, and what was the process like? I was twenty six when I turned pro. Okay, um, so I started. You know, so about nine years of about nine years of yeah. competing and uh, hardcore competing. Yep, um, I had a few years there. I did compete in kind of college. Yeah, but uh, mm-hmm. I was still bodybuilding. Yep, powerlifting. Yeah, and uh, training. Training. Um. So it was the 2001 National Championships. Uh, NPC Nationals. No, back then, no one turned pro in their first try. It was yeah. NPC Nationals. Yeah. yeah and, uh, is in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, That's that, right. That year. Yeah. And back then, no one turned pro in their first try. Right. I'd done the USA the year previous. Uh-huh. I got third in the heavyweights. Okay. Um, so 2001 was uh, actually, the f- I think, when me and Johnny started training. Mm-hmm. And um, we trained in the same gym. We knew each other. We competed against each other. Yeah. But he always placed better than me. Yeah. He was a light heavyweight. I was a heavyweight. Mm-hmm. And um, he always uh, either won the show or placed ahead of me right and uh, in his division so uh, we uh, actually got together that year and and uh we had a mutual friend so we'd be in the gym and he'd be squatting i'd be squatting at different platforms and i'd do 10 reps he'd do 11 or 12 <laughs> so i was you know i'm looking watching this so i put more weight on the bar because i'm like man fuck him this dude ain't gonna beat me <laughs> and uh, i'd do you know 10 reps eight reps whatever he'd do the same weight and do more reps so I put more weight on, and then we go back. It just went like this for. And you guys really weren't friends at this point. No, we knew yeah, each other. You knew who he, but, you knew. Of you know, each but other, yeah. he's a competition. I'm yeah. like, and You're supposed you know, to go my, against him. Yeah, my theory is like, ain't nobody gonna outwork me in the gym. Hell no. And um, because this dude beats me in the gym, he'll beat me on the stage. Yeah. And uh, so um, and he's thinking the same way. He's like, dude ain't gonna beat me. So uh, he's never beat me in the, on stage. I ain't gonna let him. So um, this went off quite a while. And we had a mutual friend, and he said, hey, he goes, aren't you both doing the nationals? He goes, Johnny is, aren't you? I go, yeah. He goes. Well, you two idiots train together. <laughs> and, uh, Makes sense, right? And he goes, it'll be good. And he kind of laid it out there. And I was like, you know, because my strength legs and stuff was his weakness. Yeah. You know, I needed his strength with his back and stuff was yep. my weakness. And mm-hmm. he goes, and he's like, dude, you'll complement each other perfect. It'll be good. Yeah. So the next day I said, hey, man, you know, train together. And he's like, let's do it. And um, we trained. And uh, back then, turning pro meant something. Not that it doesn't now. Yeah. 
but it's it's a little different now. Yeah, as an American, I think there was only six or seven pro cards a year. Yeah, they went out. Yeah. So when you turn pro, you were good. Which is out of thousands that would yes. show up to national level shows. Correct. Yeah. And, um, you know, so when you won, no one won on their first try. And when you went there, you knew the top four, five, six people in every category. Yeah. You knew who they were. Yeah, you knew the names. They've been there before. And it was like, you know, it's kind of like almost like a pro show because you knew the guys. Okay, who's going to be this year, you know? Yeah. I mean, there was nationals where you had Ronnie Coleman, Flex Wheeler, Chris Kamir, Paul DeMeo, you know, these guys that were, like, incredible. Yeah. And they were getting fourth and fifth place as amateurs. Yeah. because, yeah. And they all eventually turned pro, but when yeah. they turned pro, you were good. And it's yeah. the same thing back then. Once once you turn pro, okay, your physique was at a level, you could compete successfully on the pro level. Right. And... um they made it, you know, they've, they let so many people turn pro now. Mm-hmm. It kind of did away with the, after the first few years, those quality competitors. Yeah. Now you're getting guys, I'm not saying they're not quality. Right. But they just need more time in the gym. Agreed. To Muscle to maturity. Fit. Correct. Yeah. What do you think, I was, I was actually going to ask this later, but what do you think about the current state of bodybuilding? What do you think about, you know, Brandon Curry winning the Olympia this year? That sort of thing. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to say congratulations to him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's only been, what, 14, 15 guys. And he's been in the game a long time. Yeah. I remember seeing him in the magazines when he first came on. He was actually, I think he used to train in Murfreesboro, and I lived in Knoxville. I, was, I went out to school there at the University of Tennessee, and I played ball there. And I actually saw him at a gym when I didn't really know who he was. And then, like, a year or two later, I was like, that was Brandon Curry. Okay, yeah. yeah but it's, it's, it's been a while for him, so he, he's had a long come up. Uh, he's definitely earned his stripes. Uh, yep. I'm just going to be real. Uh, Brandon's a great guy. Yeah. He'll be a great representative of the sport. Yeah. Um, I think it was, uh, I think it's a week, one of the weakest Mr. Olympians we've had in about 30 years. I think so too. I'm, uh, I'm just being honest. I, I love you, Brandon, man. But, yeah. you know, the dude's legs. Yeah, they, they were, were soft. Cuts. They were soft. Soft and wet. Yeah. Soft and wet from the front, from uh-huh. the back, all the way around. Yeah. Uh, his conditioning wasn't all that. Right. Um, you know, he's got freaky structure. I mean, his front double bicep. Is, is massive, a freaky. I mean, yeah. he's got crazy proportions and right. stuff, but it's just I didn't, I didn't see it. Yeah. And, um, I agree. Um, I thought William Bonac would have been a better choice. He was in shape, mm-hmm. relatively. He, he always comes in condition. Always comes crazy. in shape. Um, you know, his legs are great. He has. He doesn't have any weak body parts. Yeah, uh, he's got a a short torso, kind of like Kai does. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really the only thing I can. Yeah, you know, just nit- makes the waist look. Yeah, the only thing I can nitpick on him. Yeah, about, but uh, the Iranian guy, Samal. Uh, Whatever yeah. the fan fa- the fan favorite supposedly. What do you think about his physique? Dude, he's the best one on the show. Yeah, he looked crazy. Yeah, insane. He is huge too. Yeah, I think he's only like under two twenty, maybe. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. He's not a ton so, of weight. Yeah, and uh, but um, I think that's what the Olympia size matters. It's gonna be hard for a guy. It's gonna be hard for a guy under two twenty to win. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I'll go back and say I'm not Mr. Olympia. I never won the Olympia. Yeah. You know, second was the highest I got. If I'd yeah. been twenty pounds bigger, yeah, you know, a couple inches taller, yeah. I had a couple of Olympias. Yeah. Size matters. Size matters. Uh, you know, 2009, I was more conditioned, mm-hmm. harder than Jay was. Mm-hmm. Jay's 25 pounds bigger, bigger and three inches little, taller. A little taller, yeah. So, uh, they want big. It's, it's, and they, that's this Olympia. You know, Mr. Olympia, Arnold said it best. You know, Arnold that's said it best. Mr. Olympia should always be massive. Yeah. I get that. Uh-huh. Um, but, um, you know, Dexter is just amazing. I mean, he is a, a timeless and <laughs> he's like, dude's like 85 years old and still fourth Olympian. It's, like, uh, it's like incredible. Literally. I'm pretty sure he's I like mean, just turned 85. Like last week. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, I competed with Dexter my entire career. We battled back and forth. Dexter Jackson. I don't, I don't, yeah. yeah. Dexter Jackson. 49. I don't know, I don't know how many times. 49. Yeah. Turns 50 this uh, November. He won it in 2010. Then I think 2008. he, 2008. And then he wanted to get or placed, Pretty high just a few years ago. 15, he got second. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. Second mm-hmm. second place. Almost uh, won it. Yeah, and yeah. that was, I think it was your that's my last, last year. I was Phil there for that, one. that year. I was, I was there for that yeah. one. And then I was there. You competed. I think you did the Europa Dallas a year before and won that one. I think you're correct, yeah. Yeah, I, I was there for that one too. That was a good show. And then I think you also won the uh, Atlantic City. And then uh, you, you got it back-to-back first in the Arnold Classic. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so um, – People always ask me what my best conditioning was, and uh, I always have two answers. I think the 2009 Olympia, mm-hmm. I got second. Um, you know, Jay, actually, I beat Mr. Olympia. Dexter was Mr. Olympia. Yeah. And I beat him. He got third, and then Jay came back after being defeated and came in his all-time lightest body weight, yeah. but his all-time best conditioning. Best condition. Uh, um, you know, he, he got the nod over me uh, yeah. and won the show. And then uh, I think that and the 2011 Arnold Classic that I won were uh-huh. my two best you know, conditions. I think they were both about equal. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> That was one of those goals I set for myself when I was 18 years old. I said I'm gonna win the Arnold Classic, and um, no you know, so that was a that was That's a huge cool. uh, huge deal for me. Yeah. Um, and um, I remember um, 
at that show it was probably uh, one of the best like, biggest honors I've ever been paid. Mm-hmm. So um, they did the call out. They called me, Dennis Wolf. You know, um, I think Dexter. Um, I think Evan was up in that call. Sent the body. Yeah, yeah, Victor or something. We did our uh, comparisons. They told me to step off. And, um, that means you might have won. That means you just knocked it out of the park. Means you might have won. It's a, it's a grand slam. That's all. And that feeling, yeah. Branch. That's. And, um, I remember I walked backstage. I stepped off the stage, and I'm like, and Arnold was standing right there, and I was like, I just want to jump up and down and scream, you know, because I'm just like, you just can't understand. When you worked for something for so long, for so for years, yeah, for, and ever since you were a little a kid, yeah, you're like this is what you you were training and for. You did it, and um, you know, and I'm just like I just I knew, and um, so then um, they're getting ready. We're back there, and here come and Trisha's back there, and she could pee the night before, mm-hmm. but security's really tight. And mm-hmm. I think back then Arnold was still governor, mm-hmm. and um, the governor, yeah. So he has all of his security and stuff. So <laughs> security, you couldn't you couldn't get backstage, right? Right. Unless you were a competitor, or you had a you know, and that place is. Packed anyways. Yeah, it's like a so, can of sardines. And so I see her back there and I'm like, and she's just smiling. I'm like, I'm like, how'd you get back here? And, and she wouldn't. I'm like, I knew, I, I just knew because somebody went and got Somewhere her. Somebody got her. And, and brought her back there. And, and then I mean, Arnold came up to her and he, he goes, oh, you're Branch's wife and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, this is going to be a good night. Hell and, uh, yeah. So um, I, you know, I got to, I won the show and, um, you know, um, I went out. We had a party that night and uh, had a great time. Mm-hmm. Ate some cheeseburgers. A couple and, and cheeseburgers. All my all all the people in my life, except from my mom, she wasn't there. But mm-hmm. everybody that was pretty much everybody important to me at that time yeah. was there. That's cool. And uh, so we, it was a, it was a really good feeling. And uh, but me being me, the next morning I got up, I was already for, I was ready for the next, on the next one. one. I'd already put it behind me and was hit moving on for the next one. So uh, the twenty twelve one, I was um, what. Fast forward a few months, mm-hmm. 2011, um, or the 2011 Olympia, I was 30 days out, and I just got second and third at the previous two Olympias. I just mm-hmm. won the Arnold Classic, so I was, you know. A, f- uh, a favorite or a. Correct. It yeah. was me, me, Jay, and Phil yeah. were, were uh, okay. you know, favorites. For and the, Phil was kind of new at that point, kind of new? He'd been around for a few years. Okay. You know, that's the thing, but, you know, people, I don't think people realize that Phil competed for several yeah, years. Yeah, for a long time yeah, he before winning, he got yeah. big. And, yeah. um, he did, well, know, not he was, physically big, but popular. <laughs> he was, he'd already won a lot of shows and was, you know, he was, I think he got second in, um. 2010 mm-hmm. and uh, I got third mm-hmm. so um J won again but um uh, 30 days out and um I did an appearance which I never do usually when I was about eight to ten weeks out yeah I stopped traveling yeah and I just stayed home and focused yeah focus did a favor for somebody and um it was storming outside I, my friend went and got the truck I'm walking out I slip off the curb and um basically my left leg just kept sliding forward my right leg caught the curb and that concentric force because you're trying to stop yeah you know you're Quads tightening, but yep. you're still stretching, yep. and it just ripped off the bone. Off the bone. So uh, my quad just rolled up. Ooh. So uh, that hurt I'm laying bit. there in the ground, and uh, and you're just like the rain's pouring down on me, and I'm just like, and I look back at my leg, it's like in this crazy position, yeah, that uh, it could never be and naturally, and yeah. I was like, I knew, and I grabbed my pants leg and I threw my leg in front of me, and I grabbed my knee, and my quad was gone. It's just off the bone. Yeah, and I'm like, oh. yeah. I, I remember just laying there going, "Damn, is this how it's going to end?" Yeah. As a bodybuilder, something like that to happen is really scary. That's usually a career ender. I yeah, don't think 100%. at the pro level, I don't think anybody had ever come, come back from a major tear. Come back. There have been some guys that had it, but yeah. they never came back successfully. Yeah. And um, I mean, Jay had, towards the end of history, had the bicep issue, and they like his last few shows, they were saying he just seemed not the same. Yeah. And um, and I had, I had already dodged a few bullets. I torn a tri- both triceps you know, previously in my career and came back from, came back with victories actually right after I came back. So, um, but a quad is a whole other game. That's a whole and, other um, thing. So I, um, I remember laying there. My friend, he goes, "Get up, dude!" And I'm like, "Dude, I can't." And uh, he helped me get up. We got in the truck. He goes, "What's wrong?" I go, "Man, just take me to the emergency room." Yeah. And uh, of course, that was a waste of time because here, take two of these, and here's a crutch. Yeah, you got to wait yeah, to see so, his orthopedic and, surgeon. Uh, so I called my wife and I said, "Trish, I said, book me a flight home tonight. I don't care what it costs. I'm coming home." Yeah. She's what happened. I said, and I told her, and I um, hung up from her. I called my surgeon who I was personal friends with and uh-huh. I said he answered the phone he goes what'd you do I'm like not good man I yeah. told him I said I tore my quad off the bone I said and he's like I go I go I'm telling you and he respected my opinion because I know you know you as a bodybuilder you know you know what you, you know doing. and um so he said all right he goes when you coming home I said tonight he goes I'll meet you in the morning it was a Sunday he went and opened the office up and um he looked at it and goes yeah he tore it all the way off and um he said, uh, we'll do surgery tomorrow morning. Yeah. He goes, get an MRI at like 6 a.m. And I think we had surgery. I was on the operating table by 10 a.m. And wow. 
had it reattached and um got home and um that was on a monday so wednesday i'm at home and uh, of course i'm i was 30 days out from olympia i was heavier leaner and better than i'd ever been mm -hmm. at any previous show and mm -hmm. i was like feeling really good yeah you know because the previous time i you know 2011 arnold i was all-time best mm -hmm. i was looking just like that but four or five pounds heavier yeah and um Everything was just—it's one of those times. And everything was just—you know when it's flow. You know just, when you got the just, flow. Yeah, it's rolling, man. Yeah. And um, and I'm sitting there, and of course, you know, by this time, you know, the forums and the social media and everything are, you know, basically singing my demise. Mm -hmm. All the self-proclaimed experts and gurus are like, "Oh, he's done. The forum you know, gurus. No, no one ever can yeah. come back from this, and he's done, and blah blah blah." So I sit there and li I listened and read this shit and listened to it for. But that know, put a little fuel on the fire for for two days, and um, I went from being depressed. To being angry, mm -hmm. and I remember thinking, "I'm like, who the fuck are these people to tell me I'm done?" Yeah, my man has the right to tell another man he can't do something. No man, right? No. And, um, I sat Try there, me. I sat there and um, <laughs> on a, I think a Tuesday night, I laid there on, in my recliner because that's where I slept for the first you know, month. Um, mm -hmm. I remember thinking, "Man, I ain't done. Who the fuck? Who the fuck is gonna tell me I'm done? I go, right. I'll be the one. No one or nothing's gonna define me. Hell no. I'm like, when I think when I'm ready to retire, when I'm done, I'll be the one who decides." No event, no person, no company yeah. is going to tell me when I'm done. Yeah. And um, Wednesday, I'm sitting there, and um, I'm still thinking about this. It's getting more and more worked up about it. I told Trish, I said, hey, I'm going to do the Arnold Classic. She goes, in six months? I go, yeah, in six months. She goes, we better start eating. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, She's always there to, to bring you up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I remember she went to the kitchen. She cooked me a big plate of chicken and rice. Chicken and lap, rice, baby. Handed me a fork. She goes, eat time to eat and um i ate which for those of you at home six months recovery time for a tear off the bone usually doesn't happen he was telling me you know the doctor was like it'll be a year before you can probably train yeah. the oh. way you want to yeah and i'm talking about when it's serious Arnold. i'm talking about training Arnold classic Jeez. in six yeah. months right and i can't yeah. even walk right i gotta learn how to walk first before i can even yeah think about squatting or leg pressing or anything yeah. else and, um, start bending your knee again you can't even bend your knee so the next monday one week post-op i showed up at metroflex and uh, i remember johnny he goes man what the hell are you doing like I'm training for Daryl Classic. <laughs> he just looked at me and goes, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Do it. Yeah, so. Uh, True camaraderie right there. So uh, I remember I trained that day and I had a good workout, man. I, uh, we trained chest. Yeah. And um, you know, I just had my quad reattached. I'm in a cast and crutches. I remember we're doing chest and I inclined 405 for like 10 reps and did 108 pound dumbbells. I and mean, I'm going to train like a madman. Yeah. And um, I just refused to stop. Yeah. And um you know, it took six weeks before I get, you know, it's six weeks to tendon. It takes about six weeks for a tendon to reattach itself to the bone. Right. Then the next thing is you got to get full range of motion. Right. And then you got to learn to do basic stuff like walk again. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, I was way behind the eight ball on this thing. Yeah. And um, I, mean, I went to Brian and I said, hey, man, I need your help. And um, I go, I need help with this one. Yeah. He said, all right. And uh, he explained how we're going to do it. Only time I've ever disagreed with him in yeah. the entire 27, 20 years I've known the man. Yeah. When he said do something a certain way, I just always just did it. Yeah. And um, I said I went back next day and I was like, we had the conversation over because I kind of I disagreed with how yeah how he wanted to rehab approach it. it. And yeah. um, he said no, and uh, we went through the whole thing again. And I said, all right, I'm gonna put it in your hands. And um, I prayed to God, and asked for Him to help, mm -hmm. and thank God I did. So um, I went through hell for five, six months, whatever That's, it was. You think the injury hurts? Try yeah. rehab. Yeah, just trying to bend it, you know, yeah. the way was uh, an accomplishment then. My first day when I actually, I called it a real workout, uh -huh. not a rehab workout, uh -huh. I had one plate on one side of the leg press, 45 pounds. Yeah. I could barely do 10 reps. Yeah. My, my leg crazy. was just in there shaking and wobbling. And yeah. of course, you know, I don't know, anybody's ever 20 thing knows how much it atrophies and everything. <sighs> and um, ton. So um, I, I remember I, I could barely do 10 reps and I, I was so angry. I'm like, I'm like, this ain't going to beat me. But the, the key is, is you get angry and get pissed off. That's one thing. But if you get angry and pissed off and you can channel that you into a positive, it. something yeah. positive, then it fueled me. Yep. And um, that's what drove me. So no matter how bad it hurt, no matter how much pain, all these things I went through, I just took that anger and channeled it, made it positive. Yeah. And um, every week I got better and better and better and better. And um, I didn't know. I knew I was going to be able to compete. I didn't know if I was going to be able to compete successfully. Right. When I was about 30 days out, um, I remember I posed mm -hmm. in the gym there. And I looked at, in the mirror and I was like... I can do this. I can do this. And, um, it's happening. So um, that's cool, man. Went to the show and I pulled off another one. So another I, one. The best, the best revenge on uh, haters 
The success. The success. It's a show them so, the door. <laughs> and, uh, That's awesome, man. You know, for me, it's just, you know, it's a, that was, I was living my dream, man, um, you know, being a pro bodybuilder. So I'm like, it's not going to end like this. I yeah. was not going to let it happen like that yeah. and I go out like that. So, yeah. And you went on to do quite a few more shows after that, too. Yeah, the next week I went to us, uh, when I went to Australia the next week. Okay. One down in Australia and one had several more top five finishes in Olympia. And yeah. The, that was the Arnold Australia, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I went on to, uh, had several more victories and several top five finishes at the Olympia. What do you think about all the international competition now? It seems like there's a lot more competitors coming out of other countries, out of the pipelines, rather than in the 2000s and uh, in the 90s. <clears throat> yeah, you're going to see uh, bodybuilding has really expanded across the world. Yeah. Uh, the Middle East, it's hot. It's there's some serious talent there, isn't that Brandon Curry? Doesn't he train out of the Middle East? He trains out of the Oxygen Gym in yeah. Kuwait, yeah. you know, with, with those guys and uh, the Camel Crew and all them. Yep, Camel and um, the Middle East is huge. Uh, you got some great guys coming out of Iran, uh, mm -hmm. Dubai, mm -hmm. you know, Egypt, these mm -hmm. places. So, uh, there's a couple of decent ones out of uh, Brazil I've seen. Brazil, they got great genetics, yeah, the they really women. do. They, it's just uh, the genetics that come out of the uh, big I, legs and small waist. I've been there many, many times, spent a lot of time in Brazil, and um. You know the uh, that new division, the wellness division. Yep, I promise you, the Brazilian chicks will dominate. Oh, there's no question. It's tailor made for them. There's no question. Yeah. What do you think of all the new divisions the uh, IFBB and PC are doing? We got the new wellness, classic physique is still fairly new. That's that's the division I compete in. Obviously, men's physique was new in two thousand back in two thousand ten mm -hmm. or two thousand eleven. What do you think of all the new division bikini? I think it's great because it's um, not everybody wants to be a two hundred and seventy pound pro bodybuilder. Correct. Not you know so uh, especially for the women. You know. Yep. Um, um, You've got the bikini, the figure, the wellness coming up this yeah. year. Um, you know the the, the um, women's physique. Yep. You know all these divisions. So uh, there's something. You know, not everybody wants to be a female bodybuilder. Not everybody wants to be a even figure competitor. But you know, bikini. There's something that a girl can look at and be like, "Oh, that looks awesome." I don't something like that, that they can do. Yeah, yeah. And so it's brought so many more people into the show. It has. When, I, when I was coming up, these local shows. If you had 80, 90 people in a show, like, wow, man, that's huge. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure in Houston we regularly have four or five. Hundred plus in the show. That's huge. So, uh, and it's brought so many more people into the show. Uh, I do think at the men's open level, at, at the pro level, yeah, I think it's hurt that division. Yeah, so I think um, you've taken some talent away from that, and they've gone into the other divisions. Correct. Yeah, correct. Uh, I definitely see you, that. You take the classic uh, bodybuilding division. Yeah, look at the top five guys at Olympia. Those sure. guys look like bodybuilders. Correct. Hundred percent. That, that, that's. You go, I'm gonna use this. Go back to the nineties. Uh -huh. You had flex. Kevin, Dorian, Sean, uh, maybe not Dorian, but yeah. um, some of the other guys, Chris Kamara, yeah. all those guys, we were all classic bodybuilders at yeah. one point. It's yeah. Called, oh, there's it's called, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of times it was called being amateur, right? Right. Because you had to turn pro, you had to get enough size on to turn pro yeah. because there's only one division. Right. Um, so what you're seeing is these guys turning pro and if you put another 25, 30 pounds on those guys, there's your top five of the Olympia. You're right. I, mean, I agree with that. Like Chris Bumstead. Yeah, that dude's physique uh, is crazy. Is it's a Brian, all them guys. Brian, yeah. Dude, if you they put, put 25, 30 on. pounds on those guys, you got something that's world class. Yeah. yeah. And um, not that they're not world class in their division, they are. Yeah, they are. But I'm talking in the, the men's open division where the money's at. And uh, so I think that's what's happened. These guys have kind of turned pro, in my opinion, a little premature. Mm -hmm. If they would just stayed at the amateur level in the bodybuilding, yeah. they would have been, they eventually got the pro card. Yeah. When they compete with the big boys. And yep. I think that would have. Yeah, let's talk about the money a little bit. There's a huge separation between open bodybuilding and, let's say, just classic physique. I think classic physique. I think Bum said won like thirty grand or something. What is uh? What is first place in the four four hundred thousand four hundred k? That's first. Man. First place. Uh, on a second is like maybe two hundred. Yeah, which is still no, which is still not chump change. Too shabby. <laughs> so, um, no, I mean, I said, you know, that's something when people, me and Trish, you know, we both competed, but she always put me first, and um. People are like, well, how do you do that? And he goes, she was like, he can get 10th place and make more than if I win. Yeah. And she goes, plus he gets the big contracts. I don't. Yep. And, um, you know, there was um, some of the men's, um, men's physique guys were saying, oh, we saved the sport, blah, blah, blah. And I think uh, I think Dexter spoke up and he was like, he goes, let me tell you something, son. <laughs> he said, uh, he goes, you guys, your division didn't even exist back in the day. And he goes, it was just us. Yeah. And he goes, we sold that arena out. Yeah. He goes, you take all the other divisions away. We sold it out. We still gonna sell it, sell it out. Yeah. He goes so. Bodybuilding is still bodybuilding. Yeah. It's still dominant, and, and that that's why open bodybuilding. All the all the prize money is still in the open in, division. In the open division, because people come to the Olympia to see the biggest, larger than life freaks, the best, and that's what a so, lot of people, a lot of the uh, average no, Joes not, don't understand. That's not taking anything away from the other divisions. No, not at all. I mean, these dudes are getting weird in the classic thing. They're going. They're doing everything we're doing. Yeah. They're killing themselves training. They're killing themselves dieting, yeah. doing cardio, all yeah. this stuff. Same thing. But the difference is. 
it ain't they're not 270 pound yeah. freaks that you look at and go holy shit yeah you know and so it's that's what, that's what sells the tickets yeah consequently that's what the prize money is if it ever shifts yep. and goes to another division they'll get the money yep what, so for the money throughout your career was that that was uh you, you made pretty well right through through i was blessed um yeah my generation we hit it perfect you know yeah. and i say my generation me jay you know, all the, you know, Kai, all the guys. Was there more money from the winnings or more from the sponsorships? Sponsorships. Yeah. yeah. So that's, what I, that's so, what I figured. Yeah. If, uh, you know, the supplement companies were keen back then. You had publishing contracts. You know, at one point I had supplement contract, publishing contract, clothing contract, shoe contract, equipment contract, all these things. Damn. And uh, life was good. You got the Air Warrens. What kind of shoe contract was that? <laughs> <laughs> Air Warrens. So, <laughs> but uh, it was, you know, it was, um, you know, I remember around 2011, 2012, Thinking, wow, man, this is cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm a true pro athlete. You're a professional uh, athlete yeah, making and, uh, income based on your specificity. Your so sport. we, had, you know, as athletes, that that generation, my generation, we we kind of rode it to the top and it peaked out. And now the athletes are not um, the money's not there anymore. Yeah. So you know the prize money's increased. Thank you know, thankfully for them, mm-hmm. but uh, the big contracts and stuff just aren't there. Yeah. They, they get contracts, but it's there's some free product. Yeah, it's, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, so which is sad. Yeah, but the whole industry. Changes. Do you think? Do you think the uh, change in a lot of the publications with the the kind of the die down of muscular development and flex and Iron Man? There's just they're not as prevalent anymore, just because of the internet and social media. Social media changed everything. It changed the game. Uh, it changed the game. Double edged sword though, because it definitely helped grow it, but it also the guys that are good with it and know how to market themselves. Yeah. market. You know, they, they make more money. Yeah. You know, um, the guys that aren't, and most bodybuilders aren't good aren't, at it. No, they're not. Because they're they're more introverts. They're not out, you know, right. introverts. And, um, you know, it's, um, they're not, it's just, um, the opt- there's more, I think there's more opportunities now, but it's harder. Okay. Um, if you're willing to work and you're smart and you know how to do it, there's more opportunities for you. You yeah. know, if you're not, the days where you get this bodybuilding, sit back and make a ton of money, mm-hmm. those days are over. Yeah. So now, as far as you, so you're retired now, but you're still involved in the sport. You have your own show. Do you do any like coaching, or do you, you stay involved with? How, how much do you stay involved with? It? I'm still very much involved. I don't do any coaching or okay. training. Uh, okay. I've got uh, my Houston show, Houston okay. Sports Expo. Yep. Uh, down in Houston, we've got 11 events, mm-hmm. uh, NPC show, and several other events. Yep. We have jujitsu, CrossFit style competition, powerlifting, strong man. It's a great show. I actually did it in 2016. So, and, um, Loved it. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, then I've got one in coming up in three weeks in Dallas. Okay. The Texas Legends, October 26th at Dallas okay. Market Hall. Okay. It's just like Houston. It's yep. just, uh, it's our fourth year. So yeah. it's not quite as big. We're, every year we're growing it, add more events, more sponsors, more vendors. So uh, it's on its way. That's cool. And um, let's see, I had a show in Minneapolis up until this year. Really? Yeah. I didn't know uh, about that one. So uh, it was on, it was uh, doing really well. Really? And then my partner up there decided to resign. And she was also the chairman. Oh, and so a little all the shows and the whole state got canceled. The whole state. The whole state. Oh, the yeah. state chairman. Yeah. She she so, resigned. So. so are they going to replace her? Uh, yeah, they replace her. So I don't know. We're kind of waiting to see what happens. For yeah. So year. with the IFBB and they, they have a, a chairman for pretty much every state, and that's that's how that helps design the schedules and get the, the shows going and works with the promoters like you to to get, get everything scheduled. So, but um, still very much involved. Um, I'm still I'm sponsored by Cage Muscle. Okay. Hardcore, you know, supplements. Brand. I actually I use I have their um, uh, electrolytes. Yes, Hydro Charge. Yeah. I love that. Love that My product. favorite product. Absolutely. So, I use it literally every day. I used it twice today. That's so when I got that product. I used to drink a Pedialyte, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you train Metroflex, yep. especially when it's hot. Yep. You know, here in Texas, and I'd lose four or five pounds in a workout. Easily. There's no way to replace all the electrolytes. Yep. So I'll drink, I'll, I'll drink Pedialyte, which, by the way, tastes like shit. It does. Yeah. It tastes like cough syrup. <laughs> they used to give us that yeah. when I played with ball at Tennessee. They'd go on the sidelines. Pedialyte, Pedialyte, get over. But you do what you got to do, right? So, because I remember I, there was days after a leg day or a back day, I would cramp on the way home. So, uh, <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so um, I started drinking Pedialyte like years ago, and I'm, I used to think, man, I wish somebody would come up with something that was better than this, it tasted good, and it was more effective. And so uh, Cage Muscle came out with that hydrocharge. Dude, it's uh, the apple pie flavor is my jam. Dude, it's, it's the bomb. <laughs> it's so, so good, and it's so good. I gotta wash myself because yeah. I catch myself just putting it in my water like Crystal Light for sure, just because it tastes good. And right? there's still like 10 calories yeah. a serving yeah. too. You gotta be so, uh, careful of that. But um. Yeah, that's my favorite product. That's got, cool. So, uh, and now let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff you're doing now outside of bodybuilding. We've got we've got some really cool products up here. Wicked Cuts, Beef Jerky. Yeah, so um, about, uh, it's been almost two years ago, two and a half years ago. Um, my partner, Scott James, okay. he's a supplement industry pioneer. He was mm-hmm. the owner and founder of BSN. Very familiar with BSN. And it'll explode. <laughs> Since <laughs> six. So, um, so he... Uh, we got to talking, and he went and said, "Hey, let's uh, let's do something together." I'm like, "All right, what are you thinking about?" And uh, you know, I'm thinking he's gonna say supplements or you know something in that in that field. He 
He said, beef jerky. And I looked at him. I was kind of paused for a minute. I'm like, beef jerky? I'm like, I like it, but I don't know a damn thing about it. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know how know, to make it. <laughs> yeah, you know, my family used to, you know, make it or whatever. And I'm, I grew up on the ranch out there. And, yeah. But uh, I was like, beef jerky? And he said, so think about it. He goes, the supplement industry is saturated. There's, I don't know, almost a thousand supplement companies yeah. in the States. Yeah. It's insane, right? Yeah, it's a lot. And he said, um, you're marketing to this little small sliver of the population, mm -hmm. about 5% maybe mm -hmm. of the population maybe that buys pre-workouts or yeah. you know, protein powder. Especially the, the, the quote, hardcore supplements, you know? Correct. So uh, he goes, it's different from the BSN days. Yeah. He said, um, he goes, with Wicked Cuts, we market to everybody, <laughs> yeah. anybody who's not a vegan. And we're also contemplating coming out with some vegan jerky too, so we, oh, can, we can market to them that. too. So nice. that's one hundred percent impossible right. beef jerky. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll try to mark that one for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I started thinking about. It. I was like, you know what? This might work. And uh, he uh, he's like, it's a perfect fit. He goes, look at what you do. He goes, you know, whether you, you're hunting, you're you know, because I, I used to die on wild game. Yeah. You know, a lot. And um, he goes, your history, where you came from. And um, I started thinking about Definitely it. Definitely like, a good fit. Yeah, so we went to work on it, and it took a while to get all the flavors right. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing was, like, I want it to be different. Mm -hmm. you know, I want it not to be like every other. No, 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 the, not know, another Jack's Links. Yeah, I don't want it to be some greasy or some yeah. dried-out shit like yeah. you get from the convenience store. Yeah. And um, I said, I want it to be tender. You know, the, like we say, the tender side of jerky, right? Right. You know, um, not everybody likes that, but we found 95% of people do like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you get through it in the bag, your teeth aren't hurting. Yeah. And jaws aren't hurting from chewing the stuff up. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we had some trial and error, some back and forth, and uh, we launched. And so now we've got eight flavors, four beef, two turkey, two bacon. Okay. Uh, a little actually, variety. Me, we got nine flavors because today we just dropped our new flavor. What's that? Carolina Killer, which is Carolina Reaper. It's like, is it, oh, yeah. kind of spicy? I'm all about the heat. Ah, uh, see, I'm not. I'm <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people love spice. Yeah. Our volcano jalapeno is about as hot as I can go. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> we were... Uh, you know, trying it out once mm -hmm. we got it got it done, mm -hmm. and I went and sampled the first batch from where we make it at, and Scott slipped. Um, I didn't sample it on purpose because I know how hot it is. Yeah, he slipped some in the bag, so I thought it was volcanic. Yeah, it was actually the Carolina Reaper. It was the Carolina Reaper one. And so I'm trying to do this whole intro, and he's filming. I saw I took a bite of it, and as soon as I start chewing up, I'm like, Oh no, you didn't. I had sweat dripping off me. <laughs> my eyes started tearing up. I couldn't talk. That sounds talk. pretty spicy. I couldn't talk. It, like, it jacked my tongue up, man. Like, I couldn't even, uh, I was all messed up. He's laughing, thinking it's so hilarious. funny. I got, like, sweat just pouring off of me. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, like, one of the guys that works for me, Louise, he loves it. He'll sit there and eat a whole bag of it. Yeah, the hot, so, that hot yeah. stuff. So, that jalapeno one maybe sounds a little more rough speed. The Carolina Reaper sound a little scary now at this point. Yeah, <laughs> that orange teriyaki. Ray, Ray, you're from Miami. You could probably handle it. Uh yeah, but I don't I don't do that much spicy. But hot sauce, <laughs> I'll be good, you know. But uh, you know the orange teriyaki, the original pepper, and of course the all time favorite is maple bacon. Maple 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 bacon. Maple bacon. That it's sounds so, good. It's so good, good, it'll make you want to slap your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Uh. <laughs> that was a good one. Now, if they um, and for our viewers at home, if they want to get some wicked cuts, where do they go? www.wickedcuts.com and they ship to the house ship directly to the house okay so we got we got a couple different options we got turkey jerky obviously gonna little be a little leaner a little less fat the original beef jerky just a little bit of a lot of bit of protein a little bit of fat a little bit we of have carbs. a few flavors that are keto friendly okay um, okay, okay good we got so some we definitely have some keto people uh, so we, watching we've got uh five flavors of beef two flavors of turkey jerky Two flavors of bacon jerky, the okay. maple bacon, okay. and the sriracha, which is a little, little on the spicy Love side. Love sriracha. Uh, sriracha. Then we got four beef sticks. Every beef stick has uh, 15 to 16 grams of protein. That's pretty good for 15 grams of protein. Yep. I like it. Great flavor. Okay. And uh, Gluten-free, no MSG, no added nitrates, no artificial it. ingredients. Here at Six Pack Abs, we definitely support that. So that anybody can go online, order it, get it shipped to the house. Beef jerky is actually, as a, as a bodybuilder and fitness guy, it's one of my favorite snacks. It's satiating. It fills you up. Mm -hmm. It really does. Also, the process of eating it and digesting it, you'll burn more calories. It's a little, a little bit more higher thermic effect, that sort of thing. But it's very saturating. And always, guys, reach for protein. Protein, you can have protein and carbs or protein and fat, but protein first. It's really important, obviously, if you're trying to, to build muscle. But even for losing fat, it's saturating. It's going to keep you full. It's It's got everything you need. So this is a fantastic, healthy snack. Yeah, just use a branch, all capitals, 25, branch 25. Get 25% oh. off your order. What's that? All right, Ray, Ray we're uh -oh. going to throw that. Branch 25. <laughs> branch 25. We're going to throw that in the description too, guys. You can get save yourself a little bit of money. So what's up? What's next for Wicked Cuts and you in the next few years? 
We just launched our new uh, new flavor, like I said today, Carolina okay. Reaper. We've got okay. uh, a couple new flavors coming out. Okay. And you guys are in retail already too, right? Some people can go find it at the store somewhere? Correct. So Where we're, at? We're in select Pilot Flying J's. Um, Pilot Flying J, the old uh, Haslam family. We've got uh, <laughs> several nutrition stores, uh, several other uh, you know retail stores out there. So we were in gun stores, we're in hardware stores, we're... Perfect hunting snack, outdoor snack. It's about hunting season yeah, here in Texas. Uh, yeah. By the first of the year, we're going to be in a couple major C stores and um, have locations all across the country. Badass, man. Congratulations Thank on you. that and the new business. It's really exciting. All right, Ray Ray, before we wrap up here, why don't we move on to another one of my favorite sections, the rapid fire round. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Branch, we didn't tell you about this one, but we always like to do rapid fire round. I'm just going to ask you a series of questions here. You just hit me with the answer that comes right off the top of your head, all right? Let's do it. <coughs> Favorite color? Blue. Favorite number? One. Favorite song currently on your playlist? That's a tough one. Probably Old Town Road. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we jammed that here. I like that song. Favorite music to train to? Either genre or like a band or whatever. Kid Rock, Metallica. My, my Limp, man. Limp Biscuit. Yep. Uh, Rage Against the Machine. That $3 bill, y'all, Limp Biscuit album is literally one of the best workout albums ever. I love yeah, that. Yeah, all that stuff Just I hype. listen to. For Just, hype. Just hype music. Favorite gym you have trained at? That's easy. Easy, easy. Met- Metroflex. Metroflex in Arlington. Favorite item in your gym bag? My belt. That's it. I've had two, in 27 years. I've had two workout belts. Two belts. <laughs> you, you keeps track of them. That's pretty damn good. So. That's good. Favorite car you have owned? G wagon. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, I like huh? it. We're getting some good answers today. <laughs> Favorite place you've traveled? Texas. Ha <laughs> ha. My man, home state boy. Least favorite place you traveled? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a tough one. Um, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that's the correct answer. <laughs> Favorite contest that you attend, either you go to as like a spectator or whatever. Arnold Classic. Yeah. Columbus. Great, original. great show. I love watching the uh, Strongman. If you've never been, you got to go. There's something for everybody. Uh, there really is. You've got the best of the best. Like you said, the Strongman. Mm-hmm. You, if you ever watch the World's Strongest Man competition on ESPN. Or it is whatever, incredible. All those guys are there. And the um, The guy from the... Uh, what the king of Lord of the Kings or what's the show? Thor. TV? Thor. Yeah. Thornburg. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Six foot eight. Like from, wait. From, unknown. <laughs> from, from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. That's he's probably, <laughs> he's literally probably close to 500 pounds. Is he, he really? What? He, he ain't fat. Brian yeah. Shaw is not quite as big as him and he's yeah. 450, 460. Yeah. Brian Shaw's a big and dude. He, he won the four strongest man uh, yeah. several years in a row. And uh-huh. Thor, of course, Thor's the last beating. two or three years, yeah. right? Well, I remember when I went a few years ago, they had in one of the, the last events, they did it on the stage in the in the arena or whatever, and they had them pick up this, I think it was like 1,115 pounds. It was this thing made out of railroad ties and they stood in it and they were supposed to pick it up. Not only pick it up, but carry it and walk it up this ramp. The first three guys couldn't even couldn't even move it and these are the best guys in the world in the world they literally couldn't you saw them like struggling they couldn't even lift it up and then he the uh thornberg got on there and just whoop, right to the top yeah he wanted so, that and year. these guys are like they're giants i mean they're six eight six nine you know 450 plus pounds i mean just huge people it's insane it's insane but there's a lot of other stuff there's karate and jujitsu and all that stuff going also, on of course, and of course the bodybuilding show which is the, the, the crown. Best. they yeah. have everything they have a marathon bicycling events sumo wrestling yep uh, cheerleading events. There's yeah. something for everybody. It's That's like a, a festival. <laughs> I think it's 230,000 people. It's year. a lot of people. I wish they would find another city other than Columbus. No offense, Columbus. <laughs> but it's <laughs> freezing. Every, everybody every everybody says that, but I think the story on that was uh, Arnold's partner, Jim Lormer, yeah. is uh, from Columbus, and he's um, really involved with the city. Yeah, they. I, I see a lot of like posters and stuff up in the city. I guess yeah, the city loves they get, it. They get a lot of support from the city, yeah. and so they've never moved it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you would just move it back a month like so it's a little warmer. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, favorite contest to participate in? The Olympia. Clearly. Thank you so much, Brands, for participating in today's Rapid Fire Round. As always, thank you so much for joining us here in the Six Pack Lab, man. I was honest, honored to interview you, honestly. Little recap, guys. We went over our latest in health news. We talked about testing for uh, uh, we're, uh, actually a lawsuit because they're 
uh, testing these officers and saying if they don't have a certain waist size, well, they, they might not be an officer anymore. So check that article out in the description there. We went over Throwback Thursday. We talked about my boy Ken from North Carolina dropping a lot of weight in 90 days. If you at home are interested in coaching with me or one of our other certified trainers here at Six Pack Abs, please comment below or reach out directly to us. We do offer our Platinum Coaching Program. We went over the rapid fire round. We talked with Branch. We went through our Jim Fails to Fixes as always. Thank you again, Branch. I really appreciate you coming in. If you want to check out his product, go to wickedcuts.com. That's wickedcutscutz.com and use Branch25. Save yourself a little money. Get a little discount. As always, Ray Ray, appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. On the ones and twos. And your leader here, Johnny Catanzano, Six Pack Lab, Six Pack Podcast. Tune in next time. Thank you, guys. We'll see you then. <laughs>